That's Nick. And that's Joseph. And tonight we're here to talk about the film Sell By, uh, directed by <laughs> Mike Doyle, uh, an actor and writer. Um, and the film is about to premiere at Outfest uh, in Los Angeles. So, uh, <laughs> this is a tough one. Uh, I've seen, I okay. thought I would start by trying to come up with things I liked about the film. Well, I've seen a lot worse, and I, we're probably both a little hard on gay films. Are we? Why? Well, I mean, I feel like I am. I, th I think I'm generous, so I'm um, trying very hard not to just be dramatic okay. about how All much right. I don't like it. Um, Let's lead with the positive. So, Augustus Prue has really nice hair. <laughs> um, I think um, the black woman, what's her name? Michelle Buteau. Buteau. Michelle. Michelle Buteau. Michelle Buteau is Sorry. funny. Yeah, she's, she's the best part. I became familiar with her on an episode of Two Dope Queens, so I'm glad to see her um, acting because she is quite the talent. Um, there are some touching moments in the film. Yeah, yeah, there, there, there are some authentic moments, um, relevant even. But. Yes. So that's what I came up with. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. and, and I concur with those. Let's just try to describe the plot because I feel like this is the most difficult. This is what I'm struggling with the most is how jumbled it is. Um, mm -hmm. all, nonsensical um, and unnecessary. unnecessary is a good word so the story revolves primarily around Marklin and Scott Evans character. Scott Evans and Augustus Prue I'm having a hard time with the names because there are so Adam. many ridiculous names in this film um, Marklin and Adam yes. played by Augustus Prue and Scott Evans, respectively. They are a couple who've been together for five years. They're not married. Um, roles for them have reversed. So yes. initially when they met, Scott Evans' character was the breadwinner and Augustus was sort of climbing the ladder for whatever it is we think he does. And in recent times, the roles have reversed and Augustus Prue is like a social media... Like he's insta-famous. So he's insta-famous. Yeah. Um, and makes most of the money while Scott struggles as an artist who paints paintings for a well-known artist yeah. played by Patricia Clarkson. Who's in one scene. She's in one scene, that's She's correct. She's in one scene. Waste, um, completely and a, and in, the, in the film, he says he makes like next to nothing mm -hmm. for painting these paintings that are then sold off as Patricia Clarkson's art. Her character's art, Ravella. Ravella, and these paintings sell for a hundred thousand dollars. I'm a little confused how that's possible. Mm -hmm. How he makes nothing. Um, so that creates issues in their relationship. There's, they're like we, they question fidelity. I don't know that we ever really know that there's. An there's issue. a recurring motif about not settling. A couple of characters have that conversation. Oh. Okay, another plot line is. There's three female friends, and each of them have three. dysfunctional relationships. Yes, so one is the one who looks like the lady from Hot in Cleveland. What's she? Uh, Kate Walsh. Kate Walsh, who looks like Wendy Malick. Wendy Malick, who Kate I Walsh. do like. Kate Walsh was in Girls Trip. She was uh, Girls Regina Trip. Hall. <gasps> That's right. She's the agent. That drinks the candle wax. Yes, yeah. yes. So she's fun me in that movie. Yeah. Um, so... <laughs> She is in a relationship with a gentleman who looks like Neo. Mm -hmm. She doesn't want children. He does. He steps out on her. She's unhappy. The other female is... A teacher uh, played by Zoe Chow. Uh, with an awful haircut. Yeah. And who the, is in love with her student her who's student. underage. Um that's interesting. Yes. And the and the third is Michelle Buteau. Michelle Buteau, who is dating a homeless man. Yeah. Uh, I will say the opening scene of the film where we're introduced to Augustus and Scott and Michelle and her homeless beau, that was really funny because it was so awkward. So it was a good start. Mm, yeah. I mean, yeah. for what it turned into, looking back, I feel like the opening scene was very good. Um, 
But as, as difficult as it is for us to describe the plot, I feel like that's the motif of the film. It's just overly complicated. Just, Nothing really leads anywhere. Well, because the, as the title indicates, like there's a sell-by date to all these different types of relationships. But then is there? Because in the end, they all... Right. All these relationships that we are led to believe will have imploded but, but then, are, are all like... But mended both, together in the end. Both Scott Adams and the Kate Walsh character in, in this not settling thing, like it's it's a little ridiculous, especially with the conflict that breaks apart um, Scott Adams and Augustus Prue. Scott Evans. So, yeah, sorry. Because Scott Adams. Scott doesn't, Adams doesn't, Scott, doesn't, doesn't deserve to be attached to this film. <laughs> Scott Evans, who's playing Adam. Um, you know what I mean? Okay, there's a lot of symbolism in this film that I don't quite. It's just so heavy handed. It, it it's like when people make bold statements that don't make sense. I feel mm -hmm. like the symbolism in this film is so heavy, and it doesn't really make sense to me. Um, Scott Evans' character needing to sell this home that he inherited. He seems to have financial issues, but he owns this property that seemingly could get him out of debt. Mm -hmm. He implies at one point that he was the main breadwinner, but we don't really understand how uh -huh. that changed like what happened that he is not earning any money. He seems very frustrated with his boyfriend who is just working. Yeah. He's just working. Like his job is to be like an influencer. So obviously he's going to be taking a lot of photos and be very involved in like, you know, branding himself and his boyfriend doesn't seem to understand that. Yeah. I, th I found um, Scott Evans character very grating and yes. spoiled, like an upper middle class, white, spoiled gay man. Sure. Uh, very unpleasant. Uh, yeah. I wasn't into it. Augustus Prue, his character was not a character. Like he's just this, I, this, it, I, I think he symbolized like the Insta, Fame. I mean, well, it's not really Insta because he doesn't have social media. He has a website, which I yeah. find funny because who really checks for websites anymore? It's all about your social media. Right. But I'm assuming it's more costly to create like a platform yes. than to just make some website. And the fact that people recognize him in the streets because he makes lists of cool shoes and ties, that seemed crazy. I almost feel like, I mean, I know I don't want to... Uh, like promote having like unrealistically attractive people in films being represented as normal but I almost feel like Augustus Proust's character it, it would have served all of us better if he would have been more appealing and mm. but he's just like this little sort of puny guy like this bottom heavy puny guy who like is so desirable and like this taste maker it, it just didn't seem well, to make which, sense which is weird because the homeless person that cammy michelle's character is dating seems really like well kept for someone in yeah he was very appealing like yeah he was appealing <laughs> yeah that that was in, that was distracting casting but then it's like the only moment in the film has to be. The, the only moment in the film where i laughed out loud was when the homeless guy tells uh michelle after eating some hot peppers and his tongue like the flavors altered that when he um performs oral sex on her that her vagina tastes like old pennies that was a funny line but i think the writing overall was very weak it was very contrived i don't know even like the like the tutor lady with the blunt haircut and the awful bangs she like cut. like at one point her and Michelle Buteau's character are walking around the city and she's like, oh, there it is. There's that museum. Mm -hmm. Like, don't you live here, bitch? Don't you know where things are? She was acting like she stumbled upon something in a foreign land. Mm -hmm. Well, you could have cut her out of this entire thing and it wouldn't have mattered. It made any true. Sense. Like, true. She, this, that subplot with the student adds nothing. Um, and then the part... Okay, so then the two parts of the two po plot points in the film that I found to be poignant and have some depth were Augustus Prue's character being the like caregiver, whatever for his, his ex. ex. 
I thought that was something that really could have been um, unpacked better, more or yeah. developed more. And I think the strongest scene in the film is when Scott Evans visits with his dad at a restaurant. Yeah. It just is like, oh, there's potential here, but instead you're choosing to like flop about with these three women who just make these dumb statements and they all seem so lost, but they're, you know, they're not young ladies. Like they're no, just, and they're, and they're I mean, they look like they're all in their forties. They're also presented as intelligent ladies. That right. So they seem intelligent, really but, dumb decisions, but, but they're so like immature. And yeah. They're, yeah. But, but they're not young. So that was frustrating for me <laughs> to watch them. Uh, ugh. I don't know. What, what about that drinking scene where they go drinking after the art showing and then they play a game where they're hitting each other? Slap shots? Slap shots. And then he goes to hit his... That made me really uncomfortable because uncomfortable. I just think like if you've been with someone for five years and all you want like the like the one thing you want to do the most is knock the shit out of them. Like I don't know what more you need to understand to think that this needs to end. And, but, but see, that's what I didn't like about it because it gave... Um, Scott Evans, you know, he, he's going to hit him and then slips and falls and hits his head and wanders off and gets in that ice cream truck. And, and sneaks another, into an ice that's cream. That's another dumb tangent. That's another, yeah, that's a ridiculous That's a, 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 with a non sequitur with this fucking straight guy. This, this feels so guy. jumbled right now because I can't really, uh, like, the plot is so confusing to me because it's all over the but, place. But because of that, he ends up in the hospital, right? Because he hit his head and he's in the yes. ice cream truck. And then that's in the hospital in the morning is when he finds out Augustus crew is taking care of his ex lover and then and not cheating on and him. not cheating on him. But still because of that, because he kept that secret on from, from him, he breaks up with him. It's like, and in the hospital, I have to write it down. He, when they, his, when Augustus and the other people come to visit him, he, he says, I'm sorry, did I actually hit you? So he was going to hit him. Like he, in his mind, he was going to hit him. And then he leaves him for anyway. It's just, I had so many things I wanted to talk about regarding this film, but it doesn't matter because <laughs> it, it, it's just confusing watching. And I was paying attention. Like I really was focused on this film and I just felt like unnecessarily, like I'm in a maze with nothing at the end. Like there's no prize. Like life. Like, like my life. <laughs> Not unlike my life. Oh boy. Um, I, I had high hopes because um, I really did enjoy Ryan O'Connell's um, Netflix series special and Augustus Prue is in that. And Patricia Clarkson. Patricia Clarkson, yes. I mean, I enjoyed her in House of Cards, among other things. And Michelle Buteau, like I said, like I really enjoyed the stand-up I've seen from her. So when I saw they were in this film, I was excited. But this movie is um, a flop. Yeah. It's a gay indie film that kind of doesn't break out of those kind of parameters. Like it's, it, it will only play those kind of venues. I feel, which is unfortunate. I don't even. I don't even think it's that good. Well, it doesn't have any heart. It doesn't make me. It didn't make me feel anything. Like seeing these two like privileged white dudes, like. Like their main fight is that I want to contribute more financially, and, <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. and like I want more attention from you because you make all this. Like you should be happy he makes all this money doing nothing. Like right. what is wrong with you? Right. <laughs> so, uh, oh, and I'll leave, like it's action. not funny. It's it doesn't have heart. The poignant moments are few, like two, and very far between. Uh, there's just nothing to sink my teeth into. Uh, out of five stars, I would give it one. Yeah, I'd give it one as well. Do you have anything else to say? It, uh, something pithy about its it's reached its sell-by date. Or... Oh, yeah, that's good. This film has reached its sell-by date. Curdled milk. TTYL, <laughs> bye.